time has come, my friends. The big daddy of them all, the U.S. Open, is upon us. Welcome. I'm Jeff Bergerson, joined as always by my partner, Zachary Turcott. This is the Fantasy Golf Insider webcast and podcast. We are with FantasyGolfInsider.com, your number one resource for everything fantasy golf. We give a lot of information on this webcast, but it's just the tip of the iceberg. We have a ton of information, tools, articles on our website. You have to check us out if you want to win your office pools, one and dones, and of course, Daily Fantasy Golf. Come check us out, become a premium member. This is also in the form of a podcast, so be sure you can also check us out at iTunes or Stitcher and just listen to us if you like. Zachary, we'll talk a little bit briefly about the St. Jude, but we're going to focus mostly on the U.S. Open because that's what people want to hear about. We have a special guest coming on to talk about the greens, the rough, the specifics on the grass at Aaron Hills. Super excited about that. We'll bring him on in a little bit. A lot of huge contests industry-wide. Obviously, the Millionaire Maker is going to garnish, garner the most attention. Um, also, FanDuel, which I wanted to talk about a little bit, has changed sure. their format. You and I have been very critical, I guess you could say. Vo- of, vocal? Yeah. Uh, yeah, vocal of the format previously, the two rounds separated, which we didn't like. And um, they've gone to what we like four full rounds and they put together a good product so we've decided to partner with them because we like the contests we yeah, like the format and we thought there were easy things they could improve on from DraftKings. i mean there were just little things that instantly could be fixed in terms of the DraftKings scoring like as far as they got rid of the hole in one bonus, awesome which is great i love the scoring i think it's, it's better than DraftKings. it's more punitive in yep. terms of if you really mess up a hole it's not just capped at minus one yep. uh, which i think is better because if you have a hole like Phil Mickelson did on Sunday where you triple bogey hole, you should take a little more Absolutely, punishment. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, the positional points are not quite as important. So, I mean, the winner, if you, ha- you have to have the winner um, over on DraftKings, yep. especially in GPP with that 30 point to 20 point drop. You know, 20 point topping out on FanDuel, I think, is a little bit better. It takes a little bit of that away. And I like having eight. I love having eight. As guys. opposed to six, because if you it's miss way a, better. You miss a, if a guy misses a cut now, your team is not dead. Right. I mean, in a GPP, if you still have seven top guys and one guy misses the cut, your team is not immediately dead. Exactly. The worst thing in the world is when I wake up on Thursday morning, I get to work, settle down at my desk, and check the scores for the first time of the day, and I see somebody is already six over. You look at the top, and then you scroll to the and bottom. I'm like, where, <laughs> where, where is that last guy? Yep. Oh, he's way down there, and he's already, he's already dead. 12 holes in on Thursday, and so if that's you know one of your bigger teams in like the $300 or $1,500 event that you're on, it, yep. it sucks right away. You don't even look back, at least until Sunday, to kind of yep. to see things. So I like the fact that there's a little bit more leeway there. So they did some good things, and if they put together a live final, like we've also recommended, I know they did the Scotland trip, which is interesting. I mean, it would be eh. fun, but it didn't really move the needle for the time of year right. it was at. Right. It was not one that I... Uh, was big on either, but if they do a good live final, that'll just be one yeah. more uh, check for yep. those guys that they that they're doing well. So, so they got a promotion. If they click on the link on our site, and it's right on the homepage, just click on FanDuel sign up. They have an entry fee credit, mm-hmm. which means that if you play in a GPP, your first GPP, and you don't cash, they will credit you that account that you bought in for to another contest, which is kind of cool. I think it's up to 100, 100 bucks or one hundred twenty bucks. So. Kind of a cool thing. So if you're going to sign up at FanDuel, and I recommend you do because I think the contests are really good, and the more people we get over there, the get bigger better. and better the prize I mean, having to be. reintroduce the product is, is a little bit rough, but yep. I think once people start to see it again and they get used to it and know that it's established and it's going to be around, and that's the format that they're going to stick to, I think over the long run they'll, they'll have uh, some real nice contests there yep. within the next couple of months. Yeah, so click through that link. We get a little kickback too from them. We'll reinvest that into the site, make the tools better and better to help you guys out too. So. Let's talk a little bit about St. Jude, Zachary, before we get into the U.S. Open. Daniel Berger, who I had in my core, I know you owned some Daniel Berger as well. Yeah, 20, 25%. Yep, Yep. victorious again for the second straight year. this event, yeah. Yep. It was uh, was up and down for me. A lot of things worked really well. I had a lot of shares of uh, of Berger. I had, in in my core, it was good and bad. Um, Had a lot of Phil Mickelson, which Mm -hmm. was great. I mean, again, he just... 
for whatever reason, did you see the interview with him after the yeah. round? And Sonny actually admitted he felt when he was tied for first in the going in the back nine, he actually felt nervous. Yeah. About it, I thought. Strange. What is the guy who's won forty plus tournaments? Very strange. In his career, he's at the St. Jude, so it's not like okay. So if you win, yes, you're happy, but it's not right. like it's a. It's not like it's the U.S. Open. It's not no. completing the Grand Slam. So it's really, sh- really shocked yeah. that he just so openly admitted that uh, to everybody. It, se- it seemed really strange. Maybe it's just because it's been a few years since he has won. But I had a lot of Phil. Uh, Charles Schwartzel was just criminally underpriced. Well, you had week. a lot of Charles Schwartzel. I strategically faded him in GPPs because I thought he'd be owned by 30%. And yeah, he, he, was owned, nearly, he, so. he was owned by a lot. It was just one of those things where it's, I couldn't figure out why in such a weak field he was 7,900. That seemed foolish. So that yep. worked out really well. Danny Lee worked okay for his price. JB Holmes worked okay for his price. The only big disappointments near the top. Uh, JT Poston apparently making the U.S. Open was all that he needed to <laughs> get right. his mind off That's of things, right. so he absolutely kicked it in. Uh, and Peter Uline, uh, who also is in the U.S. Open, started out pretty well. The first yeah. round, I thought, okay, good, good. That's what we want from a guy who just qualified. He's he cares about the event. Yeah. Um, and then he slid back Friday, and then he slid back on Saturday and got out of there a little bit early on the MDF. So those couple guys did hurt. A Ricky little bit. clearly wanted to be in Aaron Hills, which early. is why even why do you even show up? That's what I was wondering. Event? And now I, I faded Ricky just because I was concerned for that exact thing. And there's no way he could have played that poorly if he cared a hundred percent. Because he showed. He? I mean, he he played twenty seven just terrible holes, yeah. and then all of a sudden the back nine, which are the tougher, which is the tougher half yep. of the course. On Friday he starts popping out birdies, so making weird. a run towards the cut. I thought it was strange. I, 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 and for me, it came down to am I gonna? And I was gonna fade one or the other. If it came down to Scott or Ricky, That's which why I one? Scott, yeah. One of those two. Because I and, I and I, I leaned toward. I thought, well, Ricky, the last time before a major, took third. He looked mm-hmm. really good in Houston the week before the Masters, where Scott absolutely kicked Did it not, in and right. tends to save his best stuff for the majors. Well, yeah. Scott finished tenth. Ricky missed the cut. So. Yeah. But it was, uh, it was, it was borderline. I mean, there really wasn't a lot to distinguish one for the other. And Ricky came in playing quite a bit better. So I, I don't know. That's just one of those misses that you just chalk up and you have to accept. So Slam the door on St. Jude. On to bigger and better things, Aaron Hills. Are we going out to Aaron Hills? Yeah. I, Are we, I'm pretty, did, you, did you pretty <laughs> certain? Did you book a place? I'm hoping that we're, David got us the tickets. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we'll be I, somewhere in the area okay. staying there. Okay. I um, didn't know. It's going to happen. I hadn't heard from you. You know, I already made the steakhouse reservations. So you that, need to, well, you got the important you need to stuff relax. down. Where yeah. are we going? We're, we're going, going to, to Carnivore, the Carnivore, right? Carnivore on Friday That's night. That's always good. And the 5 o'clock steakhouse. I, yeah, I like that place. On, on Saturday. That was old school. That so was, was old school. It was a lot school. of fun. So if anybody else is uh, out in the area. We've already heard from a few people who are going to be at the course. So if you want to buy us cocktails, we're always up for that. We're happy to hand out some free uh, extra <laughs> fantasy advice for some of your weekend contests That's right. on Friday afternoon. I got to write that on Friday, don't I? That's going to suck. Ooh. Man, that's not going to be fun at all. It'll just be a, a real condensed version. You don't need to condensed. blow it out with 10,000 words. Okay. You all right. Just... So we'll keep it to 8,000 words. That's right. That's all right. right. So yeah, we'll, we'll probably be out there. This We'll weekend, probably be like out there, yeah. 90, 80. Five to 90% <laughs> chance. Yeah. All right. Uh, Aaron Hills. It is a par 72, which is important because U.S. Opens are generally par 70s, so there's two more par 5s this week. The course is slated to be at 77 to 7,800 yards. Now, that could obviously change. Um, they could reduce that if it gets damp. We'll see. There's supposed to be some weather coming in. We'll see about that as well. Stay tuned. I always send out my email on Wednesday night giving you the latest forecast. Stay tuned to that. It's a little bit too early to try and talk about stacking tee times at this point. Another important point is the cut line this week, which is top 60 and ties, unlike all other events, which is top 70 and ties. And not like the Masters, Just where top fifty in ties or <laughs> but ten if you're within strokes ten strokes, that's right. The... No, it doesn't mean a thing if you're within ten strokes. Everybody's got to be special with that's these right. Things. Yeah. So uh, keep that in mind when you're building your rosters. A lot depends on what kind of contest you're in, and I talk about that in my hardcore core this week as well. You got to identify what type of contest. Are you in a millionaire maker with 120? thousand entries or are you in like a hundred player person but i mean that's that's 60 and ties rule honestly this tournament's really going to play pretty much like a normal event because there's a good 30 guys that are at the bottom that are how dare you just 
Un- don't unrosterable. Don't. Oh, absolute that's absurd. Qualifies. Everyone's rosterable. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, everybody should get a chance. <laughs> So yeah, there, I think it'll play. There's there's maybe like 110 to 115 guys that I would even kind of contemplate. So the 60 and ties, it sounds a lot tighter. I don't think I would get super super conservative on right. the GPPs just because of that uh, cut rule. All right, that's what I've got to say. <laughs> the course is really unlike any others. We read all over the industry. You know, we make comparisons. Other people say no, that's a terrible comparison. It's just like this back and forth that we heard the last week or so. Look, there's nothing like Aaron Hills. So we're just coming up with courses that are somewhat relatable to Aaron Hills. We've used Chambers Bay a little bit, has some characteristics are the same. Whistling Straits, I think, Uh, Pinehurst. um, Kiowa Island. Yeah, Kiowa, um, Shinnecock. Courses like that all can be looked at. So look at the leaderboards, and you did the tournament history page, which incorporated some oh, of those. those. There's like seven or so different years worth of yep. the course history there. It, yeah. It's a brutally tough course. The fairways are, however, very wide. Once you get off of that, the wide fairways, it's very penal. And Michael talk a little bit about that when he comes on and talks about um, you see the tweet that the, the Lee turf. Westwood had today? I did see it. That was pretty <laughs> entertaining. Crawling out of the fescue. I found it! <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. That's awesome. Uh, many of the greens are elevated. You'll see if you take a, a tour online of it, they're, they're up and they're just surrounded by these horrendous bunkers that look like you know some of the pot bunkers at St. Andrews yeah, like where they tore it a hole out of the earth. Yeah, basically. like guys There's might not be able to go straight at the hole. They might have to they, go a different yeah, route really if they get caught up. edges, yeah. Yep. Um, the, the, generally, I would say the, the greens are going to be really slick and there's going to be a lot of runoff. The rain might help if there's some precipitation. It's supposed to be week, raining so each day leading into the events. Might make it a little bit easier. Uh, we'll go more in depth with that with Mike. Uh, key stats, strokes gain, tee to green, especially approach, uh, strokes gain, putting. Um, a little more par five scoring than we have in the past, obviously. Yeah, I think a but little But there isn't going to be a lot of scoring. They're period. all over 600 yards, so I think this is, there's not going to be really any eagles. And, and eagle is going to just have to be a hole out, I think, in most cases. Or the drivable par four. Potentially, Potentially. yeah, maybe. Yeah. But I think I think those par fives, I think it's going to actually kind of even out. So I think some of those those bombers, they may get it out there a little bit further. But I think really it's just going to be the, the guys who are, are really slick with the long range irons. I yep. think in anywhere between like 175, it's 175 to like 225 yep. is going to be kind of the range of the approach shot that you're probably going to need to hit. To, to get into range. So I think it'll be a big second shot course. Okay. All right. Um, I think ball strike. I mean, obviously you want some distance on these guys, yeah. right? I mean, I, I've heard some guys where they say, oh, distance isn't going to matter. It, sh- it certainly is because, you know, just because you're long doesn't mean you're inaccurate. It's True. not, go, it doesn't go hand in hand. Dustin Johnson, when he's drilling fairways, you know, he, he's, he's, accurate yeah. so it's only going to be an edge and, and, and if you look at the guys that do play well on the comp courses up at the top it's yeah. it's usually they're guys with distance like, yeah there are yeah. some there are some exceptions oh, that sure. we'll, we'll talk about as we get to them this week um, but but yeah generally those guys who are long off the tee and good iron players tend to be the guys who rise to the top as far as the way things model out so all right let's bring on our guest to talk about the specifics on the type of grass uh, what players can expect this week with the rough, the greens. Uh, Mike Heckman, who's a grounds expert, uh, he's worked at some of the most elite courses across the country, uh, has some contacts with the grounds crew at Aaron Hills, and he's going to give us the inside scoop. So come on, Mike. So Mike, welcome. Uh, it's a good thing we're little people so that this doesn't look very very cozy here. But <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what the players can expect. What are the greens going to be like this week? What yep. type of grass we're looking at? Well, we're looking at uh, A4 bent grass, which is, it originated down in, um, it actually comes from Augusta area. It was, uh, but it, it's a slow grower. So this thing, it, they're going to be slick. Um, we're going to probably be looking at 13 stems, um, 13 foot stems, and they're definitely mowing below, much below an eighth of an inch, probably doing double cuts and rolls in the morning, same thing in the evening. That's what they're doing. They're just trying to generate speed right now. Slick. Um, And you know, 
with the way things are built these days, the greens, USGA specs, I don't even know. I mean, they're still going to be firm, they're st and they're obviously going to be fast. So holding these things is going to be tricky. Okay. So what type of player is going to have an edge with these slick greens and, and kind of the runoffs that, that go into these nasty bunkers? Yeah, you know, I still... I kind of want to go back to Chambers Bay, and if you think uh, Dustin Johnson, he's got the distance, he's got, um, and which then allows him to get a higher shot going into the green. Absolutely. Um, yep. And and the best part is, is he's on bent grass now, so he doesn't have to worry about those fine fescues that gave everyone a headache um, at Chambers Bay. So I really think I like I really like Dustin. I I like Jason Day. Um, and I mean, just your longer hitters, yeah, with still needing some accuracy. All right. That sounds good to me. Cool. Uh, <laughs> talk a little bit about um, the rough. Now, we saw a very funny video by <laughs> Kevin Na about the, the length of the fescue and everything. If these guys miss, a lot of people these are wide complaining fairways. This, this week. Are the fairways wide enough where that shouldn't be an issue, or are, are these guys just psyching themselves out? quite a bit when they see that grass. I mean, I've heard these fairways are going to be very easy to hit for the most part. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we're talking um, 40 acres worth of fairway. That is ample for these guys. Um, you know, one thing that Kevin Nod does point out, I don't want to give these guys a, uh, you know, a podium to stand behind, but um, what's going on is, is just the, the irrigation. It's windy out there, so the irrigation is hitting it, and when they're fertilizing, it's, it's hitting those first five yards of the, of the native fescues. Um, so, you know, they're rough. They're going to keep relatively short, but it's only about five to ten yards going from fairway to the fescue. Um, but then that first five yards of fescue is just, it is thick. I mean, we're talking Chichia Pet. Okay. So if you're um, gonna miss, so you say what you're saying is if, you, if you're gonna if you're be miss, inaccurate, be really if you're yeah. gonna miss. You want to really miss <laughs> yes. as opposed to okay. yeah. Swing for the <laughs> that is interesting. Yeah. That's right. Swing for the fences. You know, it's it's kind of like when you go back like to that, that the old school golf courses, your little small town country clubs. Hey, you know what? I'm either gonna hit it down the middle or I'm gonna miss it so far I'm in the next hole's fairway. Yes. That is your objective. Yep. Um, now looking at like the the types of players that you think are gonna excel, you talked about some of the big hitters, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, would you be looking for uh, you know it's a link style course, so that tends to be more of the European flavor in terms of what's out there. Yeah. Are you thinking that there's gonna be maybe maybe you don't know maybe international is too broad. Is there a specific region of the world maybe where certain players maybe Australians or South Africans because they tend to do well like in Texas courses. Yep. Or, you know, like, is this more like the Northern Europeans that, that you think are going to shine at a course like this? I got to believe it's going to be a Northern European, um, especially, you, you know, you got Rory. Um, just those boys that can handle with, I mean, it's not going to be cold, but that the wind with rain, um, it's, it's a mental game when you start getting out there and, oh, there's a lightning strike. All right, I got to go sit in the Mercedes van for two hours and, come back out it's it's not this continuous great Arizona golf course you're you're talking you've got to deal with the elements sure. and that's definitely a you know northern so European. the Irish men yep. some yep. of the Swedes the Germans yep. things like that like absolutely that. I mean right. Martin Keimer I'd love to see him come back and win another one yes yeah. I'm a big fan of him. And he obviously dominated at a comp course that we're going with, the yep. Pinehurst, right? Yep. He's been so very good both times at Whistling Straits that's right. as well. So absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Anything else you want to add that people should know about to help them win $1 million this week? Oh, man. I've heard some interesting things around the greens now. Is, and they, they're gonna, is it going to be shaved down so much around the greens that guys aren't going to have to necessarily chip on as much as can if they're off the greens are they going to be able to putt back on this could yes. be a big advantage for a lot of guys especially you mentioned martin keimer before mm -hmm. yeah but absolutely yeah <laughs> yeah i mean they're they do have they have what you know in the in the turf industry they like to call bailouts um all around the greens so and but that also means that that grass is mowed short right up to the bunkers so if you're trying to mm -hmm. run it up to the green you're either going to maybe stop it on the green mm -hmm. or more likely you're going to be, you know, hanging out with David Hasselhoff. <laughs> it seems like it seems like all the greens are kind of almost like a mound. Yeah. Almost yeah. From all around it, it drops off on a small hill to each side. So the runoffs are pretty severe if it yep. doesn't hold. Yeah. So once it's going to be, you know, the speeds are up there, it'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely have some fun watching them with a little ping pong action. Outstanding. Well, thanks for joining us and Absolutely. coming on and sharing it. your wisdom and knowledge. We really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
All right, let's talk about some pricing like usual for a major event. We've got some soft pricing. And Zach, I talked about this in my column quite a bit. We crush majors. And I think it's that's our best. You know, it's partially because of the pricing allows us to squeeze in some guys. Uh, gives us an edge, especially in cash games too. Don't forget play, the cash games. Play cash games. If you don't normally like cash games, play cash games yeah. this week. If you're going to amp up your bankroll, play cash games. Because We've it's been... easy to build rosters. Plus, you got a bunch of newbies coming in, checking out golf for the U.S. Open. Don't really know what they're doing on DFS. You'll see them roster just these bizarre guys in cash games. We've only had like one or two losing weeks for cash games in majors over the last three years. Right. It's been we. It, it's six to six is. Even with the way that the cut's structured, it's still going to be easier to get six of six through. You just you just buckle down. You just don't take the big chances in terms of, of building your, your teams because there's still going to be people who do stupid things. They're going to try to reach up and grab the top guy and build the rest of their roster and have a couple guys that are just around the edges at the bottom, and those guys will, a couple of those guys will blow up and miss the cut. And if you just kind of stick to more or less uh, kind of a balanced approach overall with your lineup and don't take the big chances at this event, you should cruise through and uh, and do pretty well in, in cash. So yeah. so let's start up top. Obviously, Dustin Johnson is our top price guy at 12000 You got Spieth 11.5, Rory 11.2, Day 10.8, Fowler 10.5, Rom 10.3. Yeah. Of those guys up top, you could actually stack two of them. Two. Yep. Very is, easily, I actually. I think people are definitely going to do for GPPs. You'll see lots of combinations of those guys. And then you're going to see a lot of ownership in that high six range as well. Then high six, low seven range would mm -hmm. be very popular as well. And kind of looking at the first lineups that you know, that we put together, that looked at a lot of them started with DJ at the top. I'm I'm in on DJ, but I'm starting to feel. <laughs> Are I you feeling you that too? I, I'm starting to I'm starting to think it might be a Spieth event uh. this week. Um, That's the problem with the prices coming out a week early. Is you go through. You get like excited. These yeah, you ebbs get and flows. You start out, and I was banging out lineups. I'm like, these are it, and I lock them in. And then as the weeks go by, you hear other people talk, and you're like, oh, everyone's on those guys. Right, yeah. And so now I, I feel like this is a perfect chance to maybe pivot over to Spieth, because I feel like nobody... We've, we've heard a ton about DJ for sure. Yeah, we've he'll be heard, owned by 30%. We've heard about a ton about DJ. We've heard a ton about Ricky. Those are the ones that yeah. I feel like I've heard the most about. I haven't heard that much about Spieth, which I think is turning his game around. And if we're yeah. looking at a course that fits well, I mean, Chambers Bay, Whistling Straits, I was 100% on Spieth when he was at Whistling Straits yep. a couple years back, which almost worked out perfectly for yep. me. Um, but it's the second shot course. The one area where Spieth said his issues are off the tee. This is going to be a much tougher course for him to have his issues off the Correct. tee. Correct. His approach game from mid to long range distance, maybe as good as anybody on tour mm -hmm. this year. We know that his putter, we know that he can handle the faster greens. He's, he's done it well. Um, you know, Augusta, obviously, he's got a pretty solid track record there. You know, he looked uh, pretty good at, at Memorial. It's an, another event where you'd have some challenging greens and a challenging, um, you know, second shot type, of course. And his game has been on the upswing since he missed a couple of right. cuts there. And I think his ownership is going to be a little on the lower side. I think Rory also will be a lower owned play. I can't... Well, low I meaning can't. what, though? I think they're both going to be high teens. Yeah, I think I think Spieth comes 18, in at like 15, 15, somewhere in the 15. Oh, you think only 15, huh? Somewhere in the mid-teens. Yeah, 15%. Uh, Rory, I, I just don't know what to do with him because of the injuries. Injuries are always it's, so yeah, that is hard. tricky. I mean, he's played one event since the Masters, and he looked okay, yeah. but not great. Um, so I, I think he'll be lower owned if you look just straight at, you know, comp course type of history. Well, his is outstanding. His yeah. is great. So he's um, an interesting play, but I, I, have a, I have a tough time going for him when there's so many other guys that I think are right there as well. He's always so popular for DFS anyway, though. It never, so never drops all the no, way off, uh -uh. so it's not going to drop too low. So I think I think both of those guys are going to be high teens. I think Jason Day is a guy that I'm probably going to be in on this week. I think he might be lesser owned than both of them. Re no. I, I think so. No, I think, I think Day is going to be popular this week. I, I think don't Day, think he's going to be popular. Give it, I think he's coming. He's starting to show something. You think 20 over. plus? I think 20%. Yeah. Yeah, really? I'd say I think 20% for Jason Day. His game is coming around. I, he goes through, he has something every year, whether he's a little bit sick. Vertigo. Or whether he's injured. He had vertigo a couple like years a... ago. <laughs> and he was he was in contention. And he was in I know contention. He was. And you look at what he's done at, at Chambers Bay and this this style of course he's torn it up. Yeah. I and mean, he was like minus what, 19 or 20 when he won the event a couple years ago. 
I think he's a, a really strong play right there. It may actually fade Ricky this week. Mm-hmm. Um, just I, I, Originally, I had planned on being really big on Ricky, but with so many people talking about him, I think he's going to be in the 25% range yeah. when it's all said and done. And if I can stay away from a guy who's been a little bit up and down overall as far as this style of course over the years, I think he's... If you look at his numbers, he's second. He's he's number one on the model this week, just in terms of just raw stats. Yeah, and it's by a lot. Oh, for sure. Because um, there isn't a weakness in his game right now. No, there there really isn't right now. But if his ownership is going to stretch that high, I may just look for some other options. In it's the area. so funny though the way the industry goes. Like when the price is dropped, I'm thinking, wow, if I can get yeah. Ricky to bomb out at St. Jude, I don't think and he's he going to be very popular. And then you listen to you on the mail. I know. I go it's... on mail and I'm talking to mail. He's like, oh, that's funny. You're the second person to pick Ricky Fowler today. I'm like, what? Yeah. Someone else picked Ricky to win? I thought Feinberg there's no just way. Was in on him to oh, win. really? So it's it's out there. Uh, it's out there, and, and that's 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 tough for me. I wanted to get him at like the, you know the mid to high teens. If he if you get him at I fifteen know. to eighteen, that's that's great yeah. for a major event. I know. But I, he's bent, but he, you've seen what his ownership numbers have been for events throughout yeah. the season, and he's just a super popular guy. I'm, I feel I felt like people would really be on John Rahm. Now I feel like that's even shifting a little bit since mm-hmm. he. He had the rough event at the players, and I then agree. he fell apart at Memorial. What the hell? So now I <laughs> think so he's starting to come down. And then you get the whole, oh, it's a, he's a first timer at the U.S. Open, so he can't win that kind of thing. And so I feel like he's starting to come down. So I feel like my shares may be shifting yeah. over there a little bit. So I have. But with Rom, well, he's not a first timer at the U.S. Open. He's played before as an amateur, That's and true. and it's everyone's first time yeah. at Aaron Hills. So I don't know that there's a huge disadvantage. Plus, he's played quite well at his first appearance at a lot of courses this right. year. Yeah, he won at Torrey Pines. So right, exactly. He's so a tough course. Yeah. So I, I, but his ownership, I think, is going to be up there, which is not what I thought initially when the prices came out. So yeah, it'll be it'll be really interesting to see once it finally kind of settles and plays out among that top range player, but. Coming down a little bit, I think there are some real ownership opportunities. Yeah, to own. if you wanted to be contrarian, because I'm I, I love Justin Rose. This yes, week. he's been a great U.S. Open player yep. over the years. Even Sergio, it's, I think, is going to be lesser owned, and there's really no reason for it. His, he's played pretty well after the Masters. I think so. I think his his price at ten thousand. I mean, he was yep. such he was such a value. It was he was like in the mid eights or something for Augusta. For the Masters, yeah, yeah. So he was he was really cheap yeah. there. Which made him almost impossible to pass up. But yep. here at ten thousand, I think it gets it gets tough because if you're gonna use him, are you, are you then gonna is he gonna be the top guy in your that's lineup? It. Yeah, that's it. That's the tricky part because if he's the top guy in your lineup, then are you really feeling? Yeah, and I know he's he won at Augusta. That's great. That's fine. But still, he doesn't necessarily. He's he after he winning there, he did kind of revert back to Sunday Sergio yeah. for a few events where he definitely collapsed and fell down the standings a little bit there too. So. I don't know if I can start a lineup. He can be a he, he's a great guy. If he's my number two there, if I can have a guy like uh, you know Spieth at the top and then go down to right. Sergio at number two, I, I feel okay about that because he's going to give me you know if he takes sixth or seventh, hey that's fine, that's great, right. that's what you're looking for. But if he's the number one pick that you've got, you're really kind of hoping that he's the one yep. to win it there. But but I, I think Rose, Matsuyama, Stenson, Scott, all of those guys are going to probably be under owned. It's Scott at eighty eight hundred. I mean that's a pretty cheap price it for is. a guy who does tend to play his best golf at the biggest types of events. Are you comfortable? Oh, Adam Scott. I know. The putter. Oh, you've killed me, so. The putter. But again, at 8,800, if I can get a top 10. He was, his, his, uh, his tee to green game was amazing it's at right St. There. Jude. It's right there. Putting was atrocious. But everybody's going to be struggling with the putter. It's going to be a lot like Augusta, where there aren't going to be as many guys making as many putts. So if there is an event that he can win it, Probably actually, it seems counterintuitive, but I think the tougher greens, because it's going to slow down the elite putters, yep. and a guy like that I think can sneak through. He's going to hit enough to six feet that he's eventually going to make one or two of them. Well, how about Matsuyama then, too? Yeah, and that he definitely has some potential. <laughs> Same I've been thing. disappointed with him this year. He looked good at uh, he looked pretty good at Augusta, which was encouraging, but since his big run oh, he's so good. at the beginning of the year, I kind of thought this is the year that he really emerges and we see more out of him, but I, I yep. think there's going to be a real opportunity to own him there. because I although, think so, too. Although you guys did talk about him a little bit on the preview show, yep. I just don't, th- I think people are going to overlook him. Him. They're gonna, I totally agree. They're going to want to go one, two in that top range and then drop yep. to the mid to low sevens or high yep. sixes for the next pick. Yep. Dropping down a little bit, a guy that um, also I thought would be kind of overlooked was Brandon Grace. 
But I Pat Mayo said he over. liked him. <laughs> <laughs> I had him as one of my core players on there, and all, all of a sudden, a lot of activity. Betting show, trace. too. Yep. You look online, everybody's kind of talking him up. And I mean, it's just you look at what he's done the last couple of years at big events like this, the U.S. Opens. Yeah, it's going to be tough for people to uh, to get away. And at 8600, it's like the first spot down. If you pick one top guy and then you drop down to a balance, he's he's right there. He is right range. there. Yeah. yeah, I was listening to Mayo. He had uh, Brad Messersmith on today, talking talking ownership, and and Pat thought that Grace would still be under owned, and, oh, no, no, no. and Brad anymore. disagreed strongly. And I I agree with Brad. Yeah, the, Pat Mayo the doesn't Pat even Mayo know, he doesn't even know his own effect. <laughs> I know exactly. Once he put it out on that show, I mean that thing's been retweeted a thousand times or so from yep. all the different tweets that's been out. That's the most popular one for majors. So yeah, you know, and just the same thing with the betting. He's show. no everybody's, secret there. Everybody's on to him. It yep. may be it may be a week where you start dropping off some of those gray shares. Do you trust uh, Justin Thomas at eighty three hundred right there? Do I trust him? No. Could I use him in GPPs? Yeah. Yeah, I, I could. Mean, is the upside there? I think so. It's, he's definitely struggled at the grinder type of courses, so he's definitely he's been a lot better overseas at yep. at the in the uh, in events where the winning score is like minus twenty, you right. know, where he can really get out right. there and just hit it and hit it and hit it. So I'm not sure, but he, you know, he looked okay um, a couple years ago at Chambers Bay. So that was encouraging in terms of, you know, what we've seen. We haven't really seen him uh, show up for a lot of bigger events yet. But at 8,300, that's that could be a decent place to pivot down. He looked pretty pretty good overall within the model this week too. I want to say that the Millionaire Maker is going to be one in that 7K range. It There's should a be a lot of Euro guys with high upside, and one or two of them is going to yeah. do damage. Yeah. Now, can you identify exactly <laughs> which one or two Europeans that is? I can tell you a lot of people are going to be on. <laughs> I can start there. I can start with Thomas Peters at 7,700. We haven't seen much yep. of him lately. It's very interesting. He came up before the BMW over in Europe, and he's actually decided he's going to play the majority of his golf back on the European tour. He says that's his tour. He's going to mm-hmm. still live in Belgium. Hey, that's fine, I guess. Play sure. over there. Come over here for the big events. So we'll still see plenty of them. Um, it'll still give us a little bit of an advantage when he does show up sure. as far as playing all the time. But 7700 is a good price. Yep. Looked amazing at Augusta. He looked pretty good with, uh, other than one bad round at Wentworth. He was right there, had a good chance to win out there too. So it's another long course. He's a bomber. The guy can putt. So I think, although we haven't seen him in a lot of big tournaments historically, I think he's that, that'll be one that shows up for sure. Um, Alex Noren's right below... And I think people will still have trouble getting on him because he hasn't had the big success at the comparable courses. Right. If they don't follow the European tour as closely, they may be a little bit hesitant. Ty um, Hatton's right there. All those guys. There's one American, though, 7,600, who I know that you'll be on this uh, week. Can you find oh, him? Oh, yeah. Matt yeah, Kuchar? Yeah, yeah, Kuch. He'll be popular. He's, yeah, he's <laughs> always popular. 7,600, it's a yeah. great price. He's a guy that you just, when, when I start my cash game right up this week, Lock, Lock him in, in at 7,600. Yep. Kucher in cash at 7,600 at this event. Just start the vast majority of your cash game teams right there, and you'll have plenty of room. Surprisingly, to he around. wasn't that highly owned for the Masters, as high no. as I thought he would be. I owned a lot of him for the Masters. I liked him a lot. And a Sunday charge certainly made that look good. Before then, it was eh. But, yeah, the uh, hole in one always helps with DraftKings. <laughs> right. So no, he'll be he'll be a solid play. He's had good history at U.S. Opens. He's just a, a real steady player, and his form has been very good. That'll be the other thing too. He's been yeah. really good the last few weeks. And Did of course, we, we talked about Keimer. That's only seven thousand. Yeah, he, he he's one. I'm a little bit nervous just because it's the guy who I think could have like that thirty percent ownership down yes, there. Yes, I think he's going to be twenty plus. Because when I'm looking down below in the upper sixes. My eyes aren't really catching on to no. a lot of names the no. way that usually there's three right. or four guys at like 6,800 where I think bang, bang, bang. I'm gonna lock in like at Augusta. There was Hadwin. There was Kisner. Those were the names yep. right away. I think I think Keimer is that bottom name that everybody will be drawn to. So if you start a team with Dustin at the top, you almost have to play Keimer with them. Right. So if you're looking at Dustin's ownership at like 30 percent. 30, maybe higher. We've seen it go even higher on certain weeks like these. So if he's at like 30%, you got to figure a guy like Heimers is going to at least somewhat mirror that down at the bottom. Well, there's a couple other players that are down there. I yeah. think Louis will be extremely popular at 7,400. Yeah. I'm not sure why he's priced that low. He's not missed a cut all season. There's another guy, cash game teams, Kucher, Usti, start your two teams right there. Yep. And, and that gives you and no more. Mess around. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't you know, mess around right yep. there. 
He plays his best golf at, uh, at big courses, in big fields. Um, looked great at Chambers Bay after the first round. Really, if you take that away, he crushes the field. He ran away with it after that. Um, so yeah, I, I love Louis down there. Um, any anybody else? Anybody who's like under the radar in the low sevens? I don't know if anyone's under the radar. What about a guy like Brendan Steele? Does he? He's he's shown up a little bit in majors the last couple years. Yeah, he yeah. He was good at Chambers Bay, but, yeah, or he I mean, was good. Or not Chambers Bay. He was good at Whistling Straits. Whistling Straits. He ago. was what, yep. T12 or something like that. Uh, Steve Stricker. 7,200. Is he, is he got too much of a narrative for you? Is he going to be too popular? I think he'll probably be pretty popular. I don't know if oh, I mean, Although the newbies, are they even going to know? Are they going to relate it to... I think so. You I think, think so? Because they think they get, the, they get their narrative? information from the bigger sources, and that's been advertised enough among bigger sources. Yeah. That, People will get that. I don't think he'll be huge. You're way popular. more of a stricker guy than I am. Are you in or out? Uh, you know, I think in cash games you can be in. I mean, it's another guy. It's 70. So you start 76, 74, 7,200. He probably makes the cut. I mean, when we saw Whistling Straits, he was an elite, but he took 30th there. Yeah. He's been pretty good at U.S. Opens. He's a guy who tends to stay out of trouble. It's a long course, so it's going to challenge him. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm comfortable playing him this week. He, he doesn't have the upside for me enough in GPPs probably yeah. to throw him out there. Right. And I think when you mix in the fact that he may have 15, 12 to 15 percent so. ownership yeah, in that it's not range, that appealing. you can probably get away from him yeah. there a little bit for some of the other guys that yep. are down there. But, uh. Yeah, those are probably some of my favorite plays in the lower range. Anybody in the sixes entice you? Uh, it's not, not much. so much. I mean, Ben on, I At guess. At 6,800, yeah. he'll be hugely popular. Yeah. He'll be big, he's a big hitter, so yeah. he'll be extremely and popular. Play, and playing well this year. I may own a little bit of, because I enjoyed the pain of last year. Lee Westwood yeah. at 6,800. Uh, the pain of ju- all the time. All the time. The pain yeah. Westwood. Yeah, because he's going to be probably like seventh or eighth place going into Sunday and then 38th <laughs> place by the end of the day, right. if you're lucky. Yeah. Which he kind of was last year. He started out fine and then blew up. But uh, at 6,800, that's a pretty good price. And he's been playing pretty good golf he this has season been. overall. So yeah. I think he'll be low owned too. He's not going to have that many folks that are going to be on him. He'll be at like 5, 6 percent. Yep. So he does, he has flash plenty of upside. If he does hang on and give you like a sixth or seventh place finish on a week where he shows up, you, you probably diversified yourself pretty well there too. Yeah. So. You mentioned a name I know with Jeff Feinberg, or he maybe mentioned it, uh, Graham McDowell down in the six, was 6,600, I He's believe. Cheap. Yeah, yeah, excellent putter. Uh, accurate. Been, yep, fairways. Accurate. Uh, has been, his ball striking has been better this year than last year. So Hasn't flashed a ton of upside. No, he hasn't. That's he, the only thing. He's like T25 to T30. He has a very like tight finishing range yep. for where he's been. But we year. saw an explosive couple spurts from him this past week at St. Jude's, so... Yeah, yeah, he, he can play. I think he'll, I think he'll do well. He, if you look at his comp courses, he had two, the last two years for him, he just forget about those couple years because it wasn't the Graham McDowell of old. It right. seems like he's definitely refocused quite a yeah. bit this year yep. on his game, and he's he's definitely been much more in form overall throughout the season. He's played very, very consistent golf. There's a couple of other names down there. Jimmy Walker, very intriguing. You see his name down there, and you're like, holy cow, that's really cheap. And then you remember, oh, he's got Lyme disease. <laughs> he might be fatigued. And you're just like, ah, no one's going to own him just very you see the name and you're like ah why well, i mean last year nobody owned him at the pga championship I and that worked out that wouldn't have been a that wouldn't have been a course i would have thought would have clicked with walker and yeah no one at all that. but in this if you look at it this should be the type of course where walker's game works oh yeah because he can be a little he's wild he can be ultra team. wild so he's beyond that tall <laughs> yeah. fescue he'll be yeah. in the yeah. less fescue right. He's got a, but he's got a brilliant approach game, mm-hmm. and he puts it yeah. pretty well. I mean, he's always been a pretty solid putter. But yeah, we just haven't seen very much of him lately, and it, it, you just have no idea where he's at with that. So, I'm, I'm not going to get too fancy. And over four days, the other thing, this, this course. I think one of the things that we haven't really discussed on this course is, this is going to take a lot out of guys. Oh, for sure. Like walking these courses, this is not like flat courses. I mean, this is going to be six to seven miles of up and downhill. In some pretty serious heat, you know. So I've, I do see that you know some people talk about. Well, maybe you want to stay away from some of the fat guys. I generally are, like to fade fat there. guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. So yeah, because you you think of that though. They are they do become fatigued. They're just not in shape. So I think with a guy with a guy like Walker and he's been a little bit sick, that has that's to, what I was saying. Has yeah. to play. It has to be one extra factor that's in there as well. Yep. So. 
All right, so you're fading fat guys is what you're saying. <laughs> Potentially, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else to add, Zachary, before we wrap up this classic U.S. Open webcast? Um, got any FanDuel favorites that you want to mention this um, week? Well, I mean, I think I've pretty much covered everyone I like. Uh, check out our sportsbook odds versus pricing. There's a couple big discrepancies for DraftKings and FanDuel as well. We include that on there. So lot, there, there are some good values. I can't remember offhand what they were, but um, I locked them into my lineups. Most of the ones that we talked about are the same guys I'm going to be on for, for both sides. Yeah. One of the things that I've noticed with pricing on FanDuel is that you, it does... It's actually, I think the pricing is a little bit better. It's, I agree. It's tighter. Yeah. It's much tighter. It's definitely a lot more difficult to go stars and scrubs um, on FanDuel than yes, it is on DraftKings. So you really have to take a little bit of a different mindset. Uh, Eric, who is writing our FanDuel column every week, is an outstanding. He's had one losing week since this whole thing kicked off, like two, three Couple months, months ago, ago, right? Yeah. yeah. So he's played. So he's had like nine, ten events, and he's only had Good one point. losing week. Overall, so his column's outstanding. He got the model done last night, so I know he's going to be locked in uh, and getting the FanDuel column done uh, by tomorrow, which uh, which should be should be really good. And like I said, it does force you to be a little bit more balanced around the top and the bottom. But I, I also like that because it doesn't just like DraftKings this week. It'll be very easy to go in at the top and put those top players in, and still have plenty of space to go and and have very big name players um, at the bottom. So I'd say overall for your strategy, make sure if you're looking from one to the other, just kind of shift your mind a little bit to go for a little more balance overall with the FanDuel. If you have any questions, feel free to email us at info at fantasygolfinsider.com. You can follow us on Twitter at fantasygolfers. Zachary does his podcast on Wednesday nights. Periscope. Or or, uh, what did I say? Podcast. Oh, you do your podcast on Monday nights with Jeff Feinberg. You do Periscope Wednesday nights. I send out my email Wednesday nights with latest withdrawals, although I don't think there are many withdrawals this week, and latest weather as well. So best of luck this week, everybody. Keep us updated how you're doing. Let us know if you have any sweats going into, going into the weekend. And on Sunday, we'll definitely be rooting for you. Good luck this week. Good luck. Good luck.